Hi, it's Jen from Shabby Fabrics with a fun table runner project for you today. This is called Tree Farm Table Runner, and this actually was a free quilt pattern from Motive Fabrics a few years ago, and they have graciously allowed us to take those blocks and just sew three of them together and turn this into a cute little table runner. This is using the Splendid Collection. That's this year's Christmas collection for Motive Fabrics, one of the many Christmas collections for Moda. And I just really fell in love with how on this side of the table, if you're sitting on this side, you're seeing the green, two green trees, the red tree, and on the other side, you really have a Christmas trees too. Those are just happen to be white. Um, so I can't wait to show you how simple it is to put together. It looks complicated, and of course, it's much simpler than it appears. Inside your pattern, everything will be full color. It's very easy to understand. So what I've done here, we'll be making one of the green blocks, is it's really put together in two halves. This is the right half of the block, and we'll be making the left half of the block, a portion of it together, and you can see how easy the assembly is. So the first thing that you'll be working with is cutting your, your kind of what I would call white um, out of, with your two and a half inch ruler. I love the Creative Grid ruler. Um, that's the two and a half inch because I don't have to find that measurement on a larger ruler. Most of the time when I'm cutting yardage, I'm using either a, you know, a six and a half inch by 24 and a half inch ruler. I love that this ruler, once I get my edge all cleaned up, let's just cut some strips together. Rather than me describing it, you can just see how really special this ruler is. It's great too. Let's say that you want to cut a project, any project, that's using two and a half inch strips, maybe using a jelly roll, but maybe uh, the fabrics you want to use aren't available in a jelly roll. This is a perfect ruler to go ahead and cut those two and a half inch strips and you can know that they're going to be right on the money because all I have to do is lay my ruler right on and line that up with the edge of my fabric. You really can't miss here. I don't even really need to be lined up with the mat. You see what I'm saying is I'm not lining up with my mat right now, I'm lining up with my ruler. And that might be a new concept for you. You, you may be always lining up with your mat, but when you have a ruler like this, you don't really need to do that at all. I'm just putting that ruler right along the edge of my fabric, and I'm gonna cut my strips. And of course, you'll follow the pattern to cut as many strips as necessary. Once you have all of those cut, of course, we'll be cutting those down per the pattern to the various sizes indicated in here. That's where you might want to be using a smaller ruler because as you can imagine, this ruler this way can be a little bit awkward. It's big, right? So as I, I per my pattern, I need to cut a two and a half by eight and a half, a two and a half by five and a half, a two and a half by four and a half. And as you can imagine, while this is functional, it, it takes up a lot of space. And that's where I like to move into a smaller ruler, something that's just a little bit easier to fit in my available space. Even my sewing room at home is quite cramped and having various size rulers is really, really very helpful. So this is where this ruler comes in so handy because it already is eight and a half and the biggest cut you'll do on this particular project is eight and a half. So you would simply, and I'll start on this end since I cleaned that up, just be just the full width of that ruler, the full. Okay, and then my next cut is a five and a half. Again, I don't really need to worry about lining up on my mat. I'm finding my five and a half. I'm laying it on my fabric and I'm making my cut. My next cut is a four and a half. I'm finding my beautiful four and a half. Notice the creative grid rulers. Black dots are half increments, one and a half, two and a half, and so on all the way up to eight and a half. White dots are whole numbers. Since these are all half inch increments, I'll be using the black dots. Let's do that one more time. I have to cut a two and a half by four and a half. Well, we already know our strip is two and a half. All I do is line up on the four and a half and make my cut. These 
these rulers are truly ingenious and I love the fact that the back of them has this kind of tackiness. They're not sliding all over my table and I'm slipping as I'm cutting, which I've done plenty of miscuts when the ruler simply slipped away and my blade followed and now I've potentially ruined that cut. So you get the idea. You'll be cutting your whites and your greens per the instructions in the pattern. And of course, the same will go for the red. And we have that all outlined in the pattern. I always love to lay everything out and get a visual on what I'm doing to make sure, does this look right? And for me at this point, based on what the pattern is telling me, everything looks correct. Again, the right half is already done and I've done the bottom left section. We'll be doing the upper portion together. So as you would imagine, let me draw this a little bit closer to me so you can see it. And we'll actually put this one aside for now. As you can imagine, and per our instructions in the pattern, we're going to, here's our fabric, we basically, just to get a visual on what we're going to do, that's going to be in that corner. So you're used to doing that. You're used to cutting a square, putting it in the corner, drawing the line, right? We've, we've all done this. If you've done any kind of quilting projects, I can be almost certain you've done this before, where it's the sew and flip method, right? where you draw the line, you might pin that or not, take that to the sewing machine, sew on the line and flip. It's a lot of this bringing out the ruler and drawing the line and doing that same technique over and over again. But we think we have a smarter mousetrap. It's a tool called the corner clipper. While this has been out for a while, it's new to me. And I'm telling you, I love this tool. It makes things go together so precisely and faster. I don't need that friction pen. I'm gonna actually put that away. So what you do, instead of drawing the line, I can leave the line there or take it away. I'll take it away. So it's, it's just out of our way. We're not staring at that. Is the corner clipper's job is to sit right in that corner. See the drawn line? See this line from here to here? Isn't that the line I just drew? Absolutely, it is. So what we're going to do with our corner clipper, notice how beautifully I have so much guidance to know that everything is squared up perfectly. I'm gonna cut right here, and I'm just gonna simply bring that to my sewing machine, and my quarter inch seam allowance will naturally take me from this corner to the next. Let's go do that together. Oh, this reminds me, I'm using a confetti 50 weight cotton. This is our neutral set. This is the only thing I use for piecing. On dark fabrics, real dark fabrics, I use that. Kind of middle colored fabrics, I use the gray. And on a lighter colored fabric, I just use the off-white. There's fabulous thread, and I use that in the bobbin as well. I've got a starter strip going. I'm sewing in a Bernina 770 today, and I have a 57D foot in there. I love that, it's got the little gate. So I've already started my starter strip, and notice how I'm just feeding this in. My fabric is right at my gate, and notice how it's gonna begin and end exactly where it needs to be. Did you notice how I never pinned? I didn't pin, I don't need to pin. That also saved me a step. Now pressing, I'm just gonna do a quick press, but I'm gonna tell you why I'm gonna make kind of a Emphasize pressing on this one. I know I'm in a press to the outside. And normally I always do that, press to the outside, when I put a square in a, in a rectangle like this. However, it's a little bit different for this project because we know that when we bring the other half in, we want to be able to have interlocking seams. Where I'm going with that is please make note that inside our instructions, we have been very specific. The fabric on the right side, the, the, the right half of the, of the tree, we are pressing toward the white and up. On the left side of the tree, we are pressing toward the green and down. 
What that's going to do for us later on when we assemble our block is we're going to have these beautiful interlocking seams. If that's confusing to you, you're going to see what that's going to do for us very shortly. Let me move on to the next step and I think you'll see what I'm referring to and how important pressing really is to make the block lie as flat as possible. So that's the very top, right? You can see how that's going to come together. Now here, you have two sections. You have the portion out here. You have the green. It's got to be wider, right? Because our tree is growing. And now we have our other portion. So we know we're going to be right side together. So how do we manage our corner clipper tool with this? Let's get that out of the way and this out of the way for the moment. It's more natural for me to use the tool this way. I can see my crease. I finger press that. My line is going right down my crease, and I'm going to go ahead and cut, and let's go sew again. And I'm going to take my little starter strip with me. I like using a starter strip. It just kind of gets the machine going, and then I come right along afterward with my um, pieces that I want to sew together. Okay, if you're inclined to save these and do something with them, go ahead or toss them as you prefer. And let's look at what our pressing instructions are. Right? We agreed that on the left side we're going to be pressing down. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so now we have the other half. As you would suspect, we'll simply go right sides together. Let's go sew these two together. Now here, naturally, you can see, what does this thing want to do? You can see, I'm not even really tugging on it. This seems like, take, make me go that way. Great. I will agree with that. Let's, let's press away from the bulk. Okay. So now, that's our two halves. Let's go ahead and sew those, flip those, and we will sew that. I think I will go ahead and put a pin in there because I don't want, I need the beginning and the end to work out, right? We all know that. So far, I really haven't been using a pin because the corner clipper sets everything up to work out perfectly. All right, let's take that over to our machine. This is where I want you referring back to the pattern so that you will be pressing in the direction so that we'll have those nesting seams. I'm going to bring out that other half of the tree. I always kind of like to reorient myself and say, okay, yes, this is the top portion of my tree. Everything else has been pressed downward, just like we're showing. The arrows are pointing down. So I'm going to heat up that seam. And similarly, I'm going to be pressing downward on that. I like to press from both sides to make sure I didn't take a tuck. Um, sometimes I've done that where I've left a little bit of a tuck in there. 
especially if there's some bulk. So go ahead and double check that, maybe even kind of just encourage it to open up and get that tuck away. Okay, I'm gonna get that iron heating up good and hot. Now you can see our tree is growing. So I will go ahead and sew this together. And again, let's just put a pin in there at the beginning and the end. Maybe I'll even put one in the middle so it doesn't pooch out. I have to make sure I don't want that seam to roll over on me, so let's just be careful that doesn't happen. See what we're doing we know we're going to press downward let's heat up that seam and down again so we've got the other half done and now you're going to see why this pressing has really set us up for success um, and before in my early days of quilting I was like ah just press wherever you want to and I'd sometimes end up with all of the seams kind of kind of coming together and my blocks didn't lay flat at all and my long arm quilter would sometimes comment on how there was so much bulk that should break a needle even when she was trying to quilt my quilt so I've learned that thinking about interlocking seams ahead of time and planning that is very valuable so let's look at that of course you're going to sew the two halves together see how the mindfulness this seam is going this direction and this is going that way. So they just lay perfectly and this little valley is exactly where I'm gonna put my pin. And then look at this little intersection right here, how they just nest perfectly. This is what makes the difference between a block coming out pretty good and very good. It's all of these steps along the way. So if you're new to quilting, or maybe you haven't um, quilted in a while, I just want to encourage you, whenever you're using a pattern, to really do consider the best way to press something um, so that you have these beautiful nested seams and your block comes out laying nice and flat. And the seams come together exactly where you want them to come together. Let's go ahead we're gonna take this to the sewing machine and we're gonna finish up this block. Notice I've pinned from this side versus the other side so I can keep my pins in place while I sew. That's very important. When I was an early quilter, I would pin from this side and I'd be removing them and removing them. I don't want them to be removed. I want them to stay in place because they're stabilizing the block. Let's get right in there. Now sometimes when I'm sewing, as the presser foot comes toward these, sometimes it wants to roll that seam over. This is called the purple thing. It's kind of a funny name, but it certainly does a great job at it. So if that's starting to roll over, the whole job of that is to have that close to your needle in your machine instead of your fingers. It's much safer. This tool is just a couple dollars and is worth every penny because it keeps your fingers away from uh, the machine and the needle. Now, as you would suspect, when you've got that much bulk coming together, since we're on the topic of pressing, the natural thing to do at this point is to go ahead and press that seam open. So let's do that. Let's see how we did. Let's see if our points came together as expected. And let's see how flat our block is. I'll scoot that over so you can get a good look at that. This 
open that up. It's so well nested, it almost doesn't want to open up. There we go. Sometimes I'll just, with my fingers, try to open that up so that the iron can just kind of track along there. Okay, and let's check from the front. Look at that, look how beautiful that is. With just some very good habits, your blocks will come out beautifully. The corner clipper saved us a lot of time. Notice I didn't pin, I wasn't drawing lines. I didn't have to drag out that ruler. And look how beautiful our block comes together. This project can easily be accomplished in probably three quarters of a day. And just look how drilling that, that is. Um, again, Moda, thank you so much for allowing us to take your quilt pattern and turn it into a rudder pattern. This is available as a free download, exclusively available on the Shabby Fabrics website. Of course, we do have limited kits available using this blended collection. So I hope you enjoyed learning how to make this fun Christmas table runner, and I'll see you next time.